You know, um, yeah. Well, there's a there's a movement going on in this country right now, the the social justice movement, and uh, it leans in that direction that people don't want to look at things for how they are. They want to look at things for how they want them to be. Yeah, that just I, I just don't understand. You you cannot legislate that everything is going to be equal for everybody because everybody's not equal. I, I'm sorry, they're not equal. They may be equal in terms of their value as a human being. Yes. But they're not equal in math skills. They're not equal in how fast they run. They're not equal in creativity. They're not equal. Everybody has their own value, but that doesn't mean their marketable skills in an open society in an open market are going to be the same no it's ridiculous i used to have i had a joke on one of my specials uh, two specials ago about uh there was a story about a woman who was guarding the white house she was the lone guard at one of the doors of the white house and some crazy man broke in and uh knocked her to the ground and just ran through the white house and he was running around inside the white house for like three minutes before they finally some off-duty uh, se uh secret service agent tackled this guy I saw, like, what the fuck is going on? This guy's running through the White House to tackle this guy. And the, the joke was that people think that a woman can do everything a man can do. I go, a woman can do everything a man can do. Is that true? And some woman was in the crowd of the comedy store was like, yes. I go, well, that doesn't make any fucking sense. Here's why it doesn't make any sense. Because a man can't do everything a man can do. I go, look, I've met Shaquille O'Neal. And his dick is where my face is. And if the White House is experiencing a shack attack, I'm the wrong person to save the world because yeah. he's just going to run right over me. I go, but if my wife and kid were guarding the White House, guess what? I'm getting in. Yeah. Okay? I love my family, but if it's between me and get, like, there's no way they're going to be able to stop me. I love them to death, but I'm a man and they're women. And if there's a woman guarding the White House, I don't care who she is. I'll fuck her up. It's not yeah. going to happen. This is crazy, but this someone had this idea that they would put a woman in charge of a very physical job. You should have a giant man with a violent temper, and he should be armed, okay? Because this is the guy that's keeping bad people from the yeah. fucking president. Yeah, I, I just I don't I don't understand. It just seems like you got to find your own lane. I mean, yeah, you, you don't want to put me in the NBA. Well, yeah, physical things in particular. Well, yeah. then and then there's also mental things. Look, I suck at math. Okay, if 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 everyone has a chance to work at CERN, right? Everyone has a chance to work at the Large Hadron Collider, including people that have no idea about physics. We're gonna have a real time making these equations work. Yeah. That's what I mean about finding your own lane. Yeah. Like you, I can't add two and two and get five every time. I'm just not <laughs> good at math. But I'm good with words. I can talk, I can read fast, I can comprehend well, but I am not good with math. So I got myself into a lane where I talk for a living. I read, I talk. I, it's yes. qualitative, not quantitative. I can accept that I'm not suited for that. I mean, that, I don't feel bad about myself because of that. Well, once you do something and you're good at it, you can accept not being good at other things. Right. It's much easier. If you find a thing that you're good at, whether mm. it's gymnastics or singing or painting, whatever the fuck it is, if you can find a thing that you're good at, it'll make you, it'll give you a, a, a feeling of self-worth and you won't need to be good at everything. Yeah. You can accept and you can enjoy other people being good at things as well. Yeah, you know, I, I said earlier, my dad was an alcoholic, and I would compare myself to that kid across because I had a damaged personal truth. But I found a currency because at that time in my life, I was a pretty decent athlete for this small school I was going to. So that was my currency. Yeah. So now it didn't matter what was happening at home because I got strokes for being able to jump high and run fast at school. So that yeah. became my currency. So now when I compared myself to him, Okay, maybe my home life wasn't as good as his, but I could run faster and jump higher. So yeah. that became my currency. So now, I okay, that leveled the playing field for me. Yeah. And you always, like you said, find what you're good at, 
at a given time and do what you're good at. Yeah, find something you love, find something you're passionate about <clears throat> and that you could also excel at. And if you can work it out where it's your vocation and your avocation, you love doing it and you get paid for it, then you're just double blessed. I yeah. mean, you got it, right? Because you enjoy doing this and it works out and that's good. Yeah, you catch luck, you breaks. Yeah. If, if you, I mean, that, but that's, <clears throat> boy, that's lucky. Yeah, it is. And, if I, I just think if you're in your life and there's you don't have something that you're passionate about, I mean, and I don't mean that in a <clears throat> cliche way. If there's not something where you wake up every day and there's nothing in your life that you're excited to do, man, you need to go back to the drawing board. Yeah. Because if, if all you're doing is just grinding it out, You get up every day, go to a job you don't like, do tasks you don't care to do, and come home to a home you don't want to come home to and wait to get up and do it again the next day. You're burning daylight. What the hell existence is that? I I just – I don't don't understand that. That, Find something. I I don't care if it's gardening or music or art or athletics or something. Find something you're excited to do. Yeah, expose yourself to different things with that very purpose of finding something that you love. Because there's something out there. There's something out there, I guarantee you. Something, yeah. There's something healthy. It's not illegal. (laughs) It's not going to be high risk. There's something you can do that's not going to kill you or put you in jail that you can be excited about. Yeah, and I think it's uh, one of the most important things to do when you're uh, a parent is to try to expose your kid to as many different things as possible to find those things for them. Yeah, and I, I, I got two boys, as you know, and you know one of them really well. And I, I, I did that growing up because my dad never took me hunting a single day in his life. He never took me fishing a single day in his life. He never took me camping a single day in his life. He never took me to the lake. He never took me skiing, boating, anything. So I was, I took them to all of those things. I, I didn't know. I had no clue what I was doing, <laughs> but I, I took them turkey hunting, duck hunting, deer hunting, uh, skiing, snow skiing, camping. I, I did it all, and to see what they liked. Let them pick. Yeah. And boy, when you don't know what you're doing, as a dad. That's a bitch. Yeah. I mean, just little things. Like you you go camping and you don't realize that setting your tent up on the side of a hill, <laughs> even if it's like <laughs> 8 or 10 degrees, is a bad idea. You can't sleep. You've got to get on flat ground. Yeah. I mean, it looked flat to me, but I spent the <laughs> night trying not to roll down a damn hill. It didn't look like it was on yeah. a slant, but it was. But you figure these things out as you go along. But I was glad I gave them those experiences so they could choose and they did and they and some of it they liked some of it they didn't 